This video is going to be full of tips and tricks and hacks and strats to help you save time working in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to talk a lot about systems to save you time and to save work and to reuse work you've done in the past. You'll see all of that. But first, let's cover a few editing faster basics. And the first one, which we need to touch on, but we're going to touch on super, super lightly, is keyboard shortcuts. Three keyboard shortcuts that I have rebound up here in DaVinci Resolve keyboard customization. I have rebound S to split clip. Q to trim start and E to trim end. So if I'm just browsing footage, I can uh, split very quickly and then trim out any gaps just as fast. Really cool, really slick. Uh, I can do either uh, the beginning or the end. Uh, ripple delete all those closed. I'm sure I could have more than a full video just about different keyboard shortcuts. But for now, those are ones I recommend changing to whatever works for you. Number two is clip attribute. Let's say I came to this first clip and just zoomed in a whole lot over to this effects library over here. Cool. Uh, what if I wanted this next clip to also be zoomed in that area? Well, I could copy the first clip and then I can Alt V and that will give me this paste attributes menu. You can copy almost anything from this first clip, including color correction, extra plugins or effects, any retiming controls, or you can just click this box to copy everything over. I will uh, copy that from the first one, click apply to paste on the second one, and we have the exact same transform. Let's move on to power bins. We love power bins. First, if you don't see power bins here in your media pool, come up to these three dots and go to show power bins. Then you can open this up. You can add any more folders you want inside of it. And anything you drag here uh, will stay in this folder across any new project you start. And you can drag anything right on your timeline. It'll copy it over to your bins for that project as well, but it will stay in those power bins. This is also a really easy way to save some customization in titles and generators. If I grab a quick title here, um, I recreated these word art and I just changed this to hello. Then I can hop into a power bin, drag that from my timeline right in there. It will save that. And if I hop to a new timeline or move anywhere else on this timeline, I can pull that back over and any changes I make on that will be saved. Lots of people might have known those. If you don't, those are really high value. But now um, let's kind of start the video. <laughs> I'm going to walk through a process that builds on top of itself in, I think, a really cool way. Um, and we're going to end um, with some pretty powerful stuff. Oh, but maybe one more thing I want to touch on. And that is a tip about project settings. I'm going to come to file, project settings down here, and you will have some default project settings. If you change any of these and just click save, it will set those for the project. But we have these three little dots up here and you can create and save as many project settings presets as you want. So say I wanted this default uh, resolution to be 1920 by 1080 instead, I could change that. This timeline frame rate um, is locked here because I already have footage on my timeline. Uh, if you were in a fresh project, you could change this. You could come up to these dots. Um, you could set the current settings as a new default preset. Here, um, you can overwrite any of these presets or load them back or save a new preset. Tons of options here. But we're going to show off something um, really cool um, where you don't even have to do this um, for multiple different versions. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to clear out my timeline here. And if we look at what I have rigged up, I have a super simple bin structure here. I have a bin for footage um, with some clips we're going to use as to demonstrate. And I have a bin for timelines where I just have a blank 4K, a blank 1920 by 1080 and then a blank 1080 by 1920 uh, for social or YouTube shorts or anywhere like that. Now, for this example, right off the bat, uh, I am going to uh, delete this footage and go back to my master bin. So here I effectively have a completely blank project. And all I've done is really set up these bins. But uh, what if this is a starting point uh, you want all of your projects to start at? Like you're always going to make these bins. You're going to start with one of these timelines. Well, you can come up to file export project and that will give you a pop-up to export a DRP or DaVinci Resolve project file. You can name this whatever you want. Like if I call this new, yay. <laughs> I can click save. And then if I completely close resolve, if I navigate to where that a DRP was saved, I could have this right on my desktop for easy access or anywhere. If I wanted to start a new project, all I would have to do is double click on this and it would load resolve and open a new project with this name that would load up for us. We would have new yay here um, with uh, these folders, those timelines, and this uh, loaded this into a new project. So if I just go in and uh, change anything and just click save, it will save that in my database and it won't modify that DRP at all. That DRP has essentially become a shortcut 
to, okay, create a new project um, with these things already set up. Very powerful. I picked this up from Mr. Alex Tech. He's talked a bit about this. Super flexible. If you just want one for a new project, I would probably rig it up like this to where like you have multiple timelines. And then if you're just working in one aspect ratio or another, you can always like delete or clear out any you're not working on. And we're going to move on to some really powerful tools, but actually circle back to this at the end because it's going to, it's only going to get cooler. I'm going to drag some footage into this uh, footage bin here. Uh, make sure I'm on my 1080 timeline and just drag these both through a timeline like I would if I was editing video. This is an older video I did. And now we are going to talk about audio and audio presets. You do have your basic mixer here, um, but of course for more options we can always jump over to the Fairlight page where you have this like really powerful mixer with these dynamics and EQ uh, effects you can add here. Ooh, I really like this mixer. <laughs> I do have two tracks here, um, but this track one is what I will reliably use as uh, my, my main audio track. So say if I mute this track too, um, I could come in here and change anything I want on this track one. By the way, if you didn't know, um, yes, these are clips that you could apply individual audio effects to, um, but one of the really powerful things about Resolve um, is that you do have this track level processing and effects. So I could uh, open up my EQ and set any really awful EQ I wanted. And if I just close that, you would see what reflected and every clip on that track would be affected by that EQ. Now in a lot of these effects, um, say I have this EQ I liked, um, we have these presets up here. So I could just click this plus, uh, create a new equalizer preset for whatever I wanted, like yay, because that's what we're doing, I guess. Click OK. And then if I was in a future project, or even if I wanted to go to a different track, I could click that EQ on the this next track here, uh, drop this down, go to yay, it would pull over that same EQ. But we can do more. Because say I also had um, like some dynamics going on um, with a compressor, cool. Say we had any number of effects. Um, would we like distortion? No. Would we like um, reverb? Probably not. But say we had a whole bunch added on here. What a lot of people don't know is that we have a really cool option up here on our top bar. If we go to Fairlight, we have presets library. And by default, this is showing me equalizer presets. You can see that one we just made. And I could always, uh, you know, uh, you know, go to my bus, select that yay preset, uh, apply, and it would apply that same EQ, but I can drop this down and we can go to global track presets. And here I can select that track one, go to save new. It's, it's asking you, because I also had one selected here. Do I want to update that or create a new one? I'll create a new one called new yay. Click OK, and it will add that in. And then from the same menu, I can select that new preset, select audio two, uh, uncheck the first one, click apply, and you'll see all those effects that you could have customized however you wanted, those dynamics and that EQ are perfectly moved over. And yes, this does work between projects as well. I don't do a ton of audio work um, in my normal setup now, but when I was doing more of that, um, this is such a lifesaver, especially if you have, you know, fairly consistent like circumstances and like you're always doing like pretty much the same effects. Or if you just wanted to use this as a starting point, you know, you always use uh, you know, some of the same effects and a general EQ, toss that on and then customize just a little bit, this can save you time. That's very cool, but we're not done yet because next we are moving on to color. We're going to talk about a few different things on the color page. Um, the first thing I am going to do um, is deselect um, this track here, which just has the screen recording. So we're just looking at my video clip. And actually, I'm going to hop back to the edit page and just make some quick cuts along that. Cool. Now we're back to the color page. And say I was on one clip and I wanted to do any sort of like, yeah, saturation, Contrast, I am not, I look, I am proving I am not wanting this to look good. Okay, wow, that's no. Okay, we have an exaggerated uh, grade for effect, but if we did this on one clip, now we have all these other other clips. Uh, what options do we have? A few. Uh, one, you can select any other clip or any number of other clips, and if you middle click on any other clip, it will look at the complete color grid you have and copy that over to your other ones. Cool. Additionally, in your viewer, you can right click and go to grab still. Now, if I do this now, it will show up over here in stills in this little gallery window. Each project you make will have a uh, new fresh stills folder, but you also have power grades here. Uh, power grades kind of like power bins. So if I open those, I have a bunch of old ones I've made. And if I go and right click and add grab still, it will add that into the power grades. And these will be available across any new project you make, as long as you're in the same database. So now I could go to any fresh clip. Uh, I could middle click on that and it would add it as well. Or I could right click and go to apply grade, then it would add it. But something to note is that all of these are still 
um, uh, on individual clips. And though, though they are using the same grade, um, if you look over here, you see this is set to clips. So if I go to any of these, um, change that grade, it will only ch change that grade on that one clip. Uh, I'm gonna select these, uh, undo all of those grades, and we're gonna do something really cool. I'm going to select all of these clips and right click, and we have a few group options. We can add into a current group, which is you don't have any, uh, it will just make group one, or it might have group one by default when you start a new project, or you can have as many different groups as you want. I'm just gonna right click and go to add to current group, and hey, now they have these little icons, and that drop down we just checked out, now we have some new options, group pre-clip and group post-clip. If I go to group post-clip, uh, now if I look at that grade we looked at, right click, go to apply grade, it is applying it to all of those at the same time. Because it has grouped those, um, this group post clip, kind of like an adjustment layer just for color grades. So you can still go back to clip, change whatever you want, but then after it's done with those adjustments, it will sort of uh, tag on this extra grade that you were doing at the group level. Now this next step um, is really important because if I go in and actually remove all of these from the group, it will go away. But that choice I made um, to uh, add that color grade to that group is also saved. So if I go back to any of these clips or if I go to a new clip I add in, I can go to uh, groups, group one, or because we still only have one group, so I could go to current group. Um, but if I go to group one, I go to assign to group, that grade will come back. That grade was saved um, and that grade is still being applied to the group, just none of these clips were in that group. Ooh, and we can use this because uh, if I come in here, get rid of that awful grade, I can select all these clips, add them into a group and on groups post clip, I'm gonna come in and uh, grab uh, the grade that I most often use for these kind of videos. I will right click, apply the grade, and wow, we've got a really generic but better little something going on. I'm not a colorist. <laughs> now I think we can sort of put together a lot of what we've shown off and do something really cool. I'm gonna go back to my timeline. And remember, we still have those audio settings as well. And so you could individually customize them however you want. If you were doing multi-track audio um, and you had like voiceover but also music and you wanted to do things, have them set every time, we've got two tracks with extra audio effects on there. Uh, on the color page, we have a grade applied to a group. If I go back to my timeline and just go ahead and delete both of these clips and even go into that footage, delete those, now uh, we have uh, kind of where we were at before. I did go ahead and delete like that, like TikTok or YouTube Shorts timeline. That's okay for now. But we have no footage. We're back to empty timelines. But um, those audio settings, those are still there. And that color grade is still saved to that group. So if I go back to File, Export Project, name this something cool, like Cool One. Nice. Click save, then once again, just to demonstrate, I will completely close out of Resolve, so we can just pretend like we're starting a project from scratch. I can double click, cool one. Again, it will not modify this file at all. It will just launch Resolve, use the saved settings to create a new project. It will, it will get that up and running. And if I hop over to the Fairlight page, you see those audio presets, different ones for each track are still there. And what's more, I hop to the color page, uh, this is fresh, remember I just dragged in these clips, but I can right click. I am not applying a color grade, but I can add this clip to a group that already has that color grade. And <laughs> now my audio and color, at least in my setup, is done. I could hop back, I could use my keyboard shortcuts to, you know, edit away whatever I wanted. I could pull in graphics from the power bins. Oh, and we didn't even talk about how over on the deliver page, um, you can create presets um, as customized as you want to export. Hey, hey, yeah, here's another thing, if you didn't know, um, in any of those presets, if you type in uh, the the per little percentage sign, I don't know what that's called, um, you can pull in tags. So I can scroll down, or I think type in here. If I start typing in timeline, I can pull in timeline name, so I don't even have to enter the name of the export if um, I have uh, the timeline named correctly, which would be a step I would probably do in this case since it's just 1920 by 1080. Presets everywhere. And in this video, we didn't even talk about fusion presets, which is kind of like my whole deal. <laughs> if you want just a little example, normally I, I go through, um, I, I compound uh, any number of, of clips, especially to like bake in that color grading. And then in the effects library, I have the 
effect I use um, to like shift it down into the corner. I normally modify that, just slide it over, uh, paste those attributes over. Um, I it's it's lots of cool stuff going on, and I'm hoping um, there was at least uh, something really cool and new and exciting for you watching this video. I know we covered a lot, um, probably uh, worth it to save or revisit uh, to come back whenever you want to, but I'm really excited for all the people who will see this and save those own uh, custom DaVinci Resolve project files with so much information baked in to save you time getting up and running in new projects you're working on. And if you want more info on the crazy power of uh, Fusion presets and plugins far beyond this simple like uh, tutorial camera one, that's what the rest of my channel is really all about. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.